Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for holding this, um, this meeting. Uh, as Dr. Yerkin noted earlier in his testimony, and his, um, uh, not only this time but previously, there is indeed an abundance of natural gas located in the Marcellus and Utica shale gases uh, in West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And it's estimated uh, that this region will produce about 37% of the nation's natural gas production by the year 2040. These shale gases underscore this potential of an historic renaissance that he referred to in American energy. But as we've heard earlier, the naysayers continue to trot out their tired, disproven talking points. Unfortunately, the facts have proved otherwise. In just in the last 10 years, the CO2 emissions in America have gone down by 20%. So the shale gas has given the Appalachian area a, a, a breath of fresh air perhaps a, a chance finally to transform uh, and revitalize a whole region of the country. Uh, and subsequently, Rick Perry and the DOE have, have, have concluded that there's a need perhaps to develop a second petrochemical center located in the Appalachian region. A recent study by HSS Market concluded that the economic advantages of extracting ethane in the Appalachian region is uh, concluded that the resin could be produced at 23% lower there than being shipped down to the Gulf Coast, to the crackers, and back up. So I think that was an interesting conclusion with that. Now, we can achieve lower energy costs and dramatically decrease it if we take a different approach and work together. Congress should fully innovate research to reduce emissions. The concern, Dr. Kennedy, you're concerned about if we just put the money into research. The technology American scientists uh, could uh, develop in higher efficiency and low emissions could be sold around the world, marketed around the world, uh, and thereby address this worldwide concern about greenhouse gases. Because we've got to remember that China, the world is going to increase its energy production use by 28% in the next, by 2040, and fossil fuels by 2040 will count for still for 75% of the energy use. So. What my concern is, if that's the case, what are we doing with China and India? There, isn't it time that some of our members recognize, some of our members recognize, that until the rest of the world, especially India and China, produces electricity more cleanly, continuing to overregulate fossil fuels in America will have virtually no effect on the global environment. Therefore, shouldn't we be First, innovate first, do the research, and then regulate. So, Dr. Yerkin, with this shale grass present, this revolution going on in Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia, what potential do you see for a potential petrochemical industry up in the Appalachian area? And with projection, they're saying as much as $36 billion invested, maybe 100,000 yeah. jobs. Do you I mean, believe some, that? Some people see the Marcellus now, the region, and the Utica as the largest gas field or gas concentration in the world. I thought that some companies had actually committed to, to build petrochemical factory uh, facilities there. Uh, I thought Shell was doing it, but I, you have a Shell is doing it in Monaca, Pennsylvania. That's at one portion of it, but there are others. I know they're, they're doing some, um, uh, the ethane storage hub that we've been promoting here has been, the, the question is, is whether or not any of you have a, a, the realization that, that could this be a, a center of a secondary? Well, We're not I, trying to replace Houston, yeah. uh, but just is there a secondary, uh, is there a second yeah, possibility? Sure. I mean, secondary? The, the resource is, is so enormous there. I mean, as you said, it's gonna be such a large part also, I did want to say, you mentioned the R&D. One of the big themes over at the World Gas Congress has been specifically about uh, methane and uh, applying the technologies to address methane. So, I mean, there is definitely a research agenda to address the questions you're talking about, including methane. Uh, Dr. Ayer, would, any comments from you? I really don't have anything to add on that other than Given the uh, the infrastructure that we have and, and lacking pipelines in some parts of our country, it may make s sense to develop those centers that you're talking about closer to the source themselves. So from an economies of scale standpoint, uh, that could very well make sense. Thank you, and I yield back my time. 